So I think I've met most of you. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Bob Morris. I'm the health and safety manager, and we'll talk about uh, fall protection. So I gave you all a handout. Uh, this is actually OSHA's national stand down uh, week uh, that they do every year uh, for fall protection. Because there's many, many, many people that die every year from falling, uh, whether that's falling from heights or, or tripping, same level uh, falls uh, and so forth. So, so we want to make it sure and stress the importance of fall protection and protecting ourselves at heights. So if you take a look at the handout, on right on the front of it, right, you got this guy that they took a picture of. He's been in the construction industry for 10 years, right? So quite a long time. And then after right as he hit 10 years, he, he ha was involved in a fall and it changed his life forever, right? Uh, did some major damage, uh, affected his life, affected his family's life, uh, and so forth. So. So we want to make sure that we that we follow the proper uh, guidelines and, and do the right thing when it comes to working at heights. Number one is ladders. How many of you work from a ladder? All of you, right? So so it's important that we understand uh, oh, how to, to work with ladders safely. So you want to choose the right ladder, right? Make sure, I mean, if you're going up on a roof, you have an extension ladder, right? And then if you're working in, in the ceilings, uh, A-frame, uh, platform ladders, uh, so forth. So don't use ladders on uneven surfaces. You want to make sure that the ladder is even. Make sure that, that it's not going to tilt on you while you're climbing it, right? And then when you're up above, you don't want to stand on the top two steps of the ladder, sit on the top of the ladder, or anything like that. So, so again, make sure you're using the ladder appropriately. And then you always want to face the ladder. When you're climbing the ladder, face it. Uh, again, having your belt buckle in the center of it. That way you're not going to tilt from one side to the other, right? Uh, no reaching when you're, when you're on the ladder uh, and so forth. You want to make sure you inspect your ladder because if it's not in good shape, well then it's not going to be, um, it's not going to help you out, right? Even more potential for falls. And during that inspection, you want to check the rungs you want to check the labels, make sure all of the labels are there. What's an important thing you get off of that labels? The weight capacity, right? Because most ladders are weighted, rated for a person up to 300 pounds. So next we go into scaffolding, right? We've all worked on scaffolding. So it's important that we're actually, we're getting ready to do a big job uh, downtown at, at, on Marietta Street where they're building la uh, old scaffolding tomorrow. And we'll be working on it at extremely high levels, right? So it's important that we have the scaffold put together appropriately to make sure that we check it daily to make sure it's still in good shape. Uh, make sure that the, it is um, oh, planked uh, everywhere, right? So that way when we're walking on it, you're not gonna fall through it. Uh, ensure proper access. That includes a ladder on the side of it, right? Because we don't wanna use the crossbars to climb up on it. So we wanna make sure it has a good ladder. Uh, make sure it's plumb, make sure it's level. Again, if you're up there doing something, you don't want it to tilt over on you, right? So uh, make sure all guardrails are in place, uh, tow boards, especially if we're using tools. That way it prevents things from being kicked off and hitting somebody below, right? Uh, ensure stable footing and inspect it again before use every time you, you, every day it needs to be inspected. There should be a green tag on it and you should have that, uh, that green tag in, uh, signed off as inspected daily. Again, roofs, working on roof today, right? Right? How far in should we be before we have to, before we have to have fall protection? Anybody know? So here's the edge. How far in do we, should we be? Six foot. The six foot leading edge, right? Which is where you should mark your flags, right? That's the, the leading edge. Anything outside of that flag, you need fall protection on, right? Or if we're working around open holes, right? We need to have fall protection on. So again, it's important that we, that we have that six foot uh, marker up. Again, always wear your harness, uh, always stay connected, right? That way you, you know you're not gonna fall. Make sure your harness fits and we'll go through one, how that makes sure it fits in a minute. Uh, use guardrails or lifelines. 
So putting guardrails around these open holes would be sufficient, right? Then you wouldn't need fall protection because you're because you've got guarding there. Inspect all fall protection equipment before use because if it's not any good, it's not going to protect you. So you want to make sure you inspect the equipment. And then go and put guard or, uh, or cover over all holes, openings, and skylights. All right. So I need a volunteer. Well, let me go through. So we talk about inspections, right? So we want to make sure our equipment is fitting, fitting in appropriate condition for us, right? So we want to take a look at all the hooks. Make sure that they're in good shape. Make sure they're not rusted out. Make sure that the hooks uh, clamps are working. This has a dual uh, closure, right? You have to push in on this side, push in on this side in order for it to work. If that's not working, guess what? We don't use it, right? So we wanna make sure that's working appropriately. Make sure that it's not hard or tight to close and open uh, and so forth. If any of this is messed up, we need to take it out of service. Need to do that for both ends. Check the webbing, make sure there's no tears. Make sure it's not burnt. Uh, make sure, again, that there's no uh, threads showing through. Uh, that way we know it's going to protect us when we're using it. So check the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you want to check the um, absorbing material. Make sure it's still in good shape. Because what happens if you're in a fall, if you fall, you're going to go down and this is going to pop open and you're going to, it allows for three more foot of, of extension, kind of absorption, right? To make sure that, that hopefully protect you a little bit more and you won't get hurt as bad. So, so again, so you want to check these, make sure they're in good shape. So that way they're protecting you. Same with your harness. Make sure all the buckles, make sure all the metals in good shape, make sure they're not rusted, make sure they're not broken. Uh, pitted or anything so that way when you tighten them they're protecting you check the d-ring again rusty i mean this has been used so the paint's going to is going to be gone right so so this is fine uh check for any um wear in the d-ring right again we want it to maintain the same thickness all the way around at all times so you want to check that check the webbings Make, again, make sure they're in good shape. Make sure they're not gonna um, fray apart as you're wearing it. Check all the straps, make sure that they're fastened. And on these, on this little pocket here, again, this will tell you what size it is. Again, it's important to make sure you wear the right size, right? You don't want something too small. You don't want anything too large. If you open this up, this is Velcro. There's information in here that you can use. What is the, again, what's the weight capacity on this, right? This harness, I believe, is it good for anywhere from 130 to 420 pounds. But that includes any tools that you might be carrying on yourself, right? So again, so this is good up to 420 pounds. Uh, and it'll give you way, things to remember to inspect it. Uh, it'll give you the uh, production date. Um, and when you need to remove it out of service. So good information in here. If any of this is missing, we need to get rid of it. So who wants to be a model? All right. So again, there's nothing wrong with using the buddy system, right? Help out, make sure you put it on just like you're putting on a vest, right? <clears throat> again, make sure everything's straight. All right, so when, as he's tightening, can you stand up for just a minute? Can you turn around? So as he's tightening this up, one thing to remember as you're tightening it, where should this be? Anybody know? It should be in between your shoulder blades, right? How many times have you seen somebody wearing it and it's been down here? Not good. Can you turn around a little bit more? Turn around. So you don't want it down here. You want it up here in between the shoulder blades. Right, that's going to help protect you in the fall better. As so, as he's tightening up his leg straps, you want to make sure that that's staying in the in between the shoulder blades. Okay. So the way that you can tell if a harness is fitting you appropriately is if you take two fingers and you stick it in between you and the harness. Right, you should be able to stick your fingers in there. 
and it should be a little snug, but, but like his was way out here, right? So we wanna make sure that that thing is snug and make sure it's fitting appropriately. So all the extra stuff, again, you can tuck into, into the sides. That way they're not flopping around and, and getting stuck on things uh, and so forth. But the most important part is that D-ring in the, between the shoulder blades and to make sure it's fitting comfortable. Because if it's not, you're not gonna wanna wear it all day, right? So you wanna make sure it's fitting appropriately. So if you are involved in a fall, again, it's gonna be, you're gonna hurt, right? There's gonna be some pain. So, so how long do you think you can hang if, you've, if you're involved in a fall? Well, and they say anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, right? But what happens is as you're hanging there, the blood drains from the, from the top of your body all the way into your legs, right? And it pools there. So then it starts causing damages and, and, and problems with circulatory uh, and so forth. So it's important that if you do fall, we get somebody and we get you rescued as soon as possible, right? So we'll be putting together rescue plans and, and how, to, how to make sure that you that we can rescue you and make sure it doesn't happen. We'll also be looking at, they actually make little straps that you can put on the sides of your harnesses. And if you're in a fall, you unzip them, let them drop and put your feet in them and then you can go like this. And that kind of relieves the pressure uh, on your legs and helps keep that blood flowing, right? So, so again, that, this is just a quick uh, kind of stand down. We will be putting together uh, more training uh, that we'll be offering everyone uh, and, and putting that uh, together soon. All right, guys, I appreciate your, your time. I appreciate you paying attention. Like I said, if you have any questions, give, you got my number, right, Jose? Get with Jose. Uh, he knows how to get a hold of me. Uh, that's why I'm here, right? No questions over anything? All right, be safe, guys.